everyone so last time we had seen uh, different branches of biology right and uh, i had said that in this session we will continue some more important branches I wanted to tell you that see um, when it comes when you're preparing uh, biology for government exams, you know um, just take an example of UPSC or any uh, in UPSC only you have there are other important subjects also like history, political science, you know environmental science. So the weightage of those top geography, the weightage of those topics are much more as compared to general science topic. So obviously, um, you know, uh, you can, in, and especially when you're preparing for government exams, you cannot uh, specifically concentrate on just one topic, right? So I cannot explain. Biology is a vast, uh, you know, uh, is a vast subject. Obviously, it is a branch wherein you have, like other subjects also, wherein you have other different branches too. So I cannot, we cannot uh, go on studying each and every topic in detail, but. Uh, it's very much important to do smart work, right? What we can do is we can collect some important topics. We can understand those important topics which has to be cleared. And once the crux, that is the foundation of biology or the basic is cleared, all those important topics, once they are clear or they are sorted out, then you can revise using different reference books and then you can start solving MCQs. You know, this is what uh, I would like to guide you through my personal experience also and after taking some suggestions also like after uh, one is the foundation like I would clear all the important topics that are necessary for the government exams in general topics which are important and once that is done let's do some revision using some reference books okay so that the topics uh, you will have a good hold on those topics and then let's start clearing the MCQs okay so with that it will be a revision also you can also test your knowledge and when you solve MCQs now, you uh, actually understand uh, what topics have been covered or what are remaining, you know, uh, which different areas you have to concentrate more so that you understand only by practicing MCQs and by solving uh, different papers. Okay, so um, one book which I would like to refer to my personal experience would be Lucent, General Science. If you're liking my video, please make sure that you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for further notifications. The book which you can see right here. So uh, actually in Lucent you get uh, in general science only one you have a big mota wala book for general science wherein you have MCQs. Okay, you have MCQs for physics, chemistry, biology. Okay, um, you, for different topics you have a set of MCQs that has to be practiced and those are important. In many exams, uh, you know, um, those questions have been come. Like, if you use that book, that is a really, uh, that's a very good book. Okay, Lucent General Science. Uh, but before going to those MCQs book, what I want is once you complete this session or this course, if you are uh, sincerely following my courses, if you are sincerely watching them, watching my every session, uh, each time I upload, after that, go through this yellow color book of Lucent General Science in biology. Okay, I'm only giving you for biology because I'm really not knowing uh, much about different other subjects. But overall, Lucent is really good. It's a good book. Okay, uh, at least I have heard and from my personal experience, it's a good book. But I'll recommend you for biology now because we are talking about biology. So you can use this book once you go through my session. All the basics, once you know, you will have a good hold on whatever you've learned. And after going through that, solve MCQs from the second Lucent book. This is Lucent General Science Mota Wala book. You will have this, uh, you have the, you know, separate set of MCQs for physics, chemistry, biology. And you won't believe many times uh, you can see MCQs that have been repeated in government exams. Okay, in many government exams. I think uh, knowing this or using this book will be really very much helpful to you all uh, when it comes to preparation. Okay, so I just wanted to tell you this. So, uh, let's and another thing is doubts are always welcome. If uh, you have doubts regarding biology in any of the topic then you can just comment and let me know so in my next session i will be def before uh, beginning of my session i will definitely clarify those doubts 
so it would be better if you have any doubts please comment and let me know okay so we were seeing branches right now there are different branches if you see uh, in biology so i told you about that lucent book now in that also uh, there there are a set of branches that have been enlisted even if you go through those all those branches that would be enough mostly you have to focus on the branches that are related to environment like what is ecology what is evolution even histology anatomy these are also mostly observed most commonly observed genetics so today we would be also uh, i would cover some more important uh, uh, branches beginning with morphology so if the question comes uh, study of external forms okay is called as dash external forms or features is called as dash then the answer has to be morphology okay morphology what is logy logy study morpho means external form okay so for example this christmas tree so the study of i am seeing okay how uh, are the leaves of this christmas tree okay these are needle like okay so this study this is called as morphology this is called as morphology this is called as morphology okay so this study is called as morphology or studying an external form whereas study of internal structure is called as dash giving you 2 seconds it is anatomy okay we had discussed this before study of internal structure is anatomy external form is morphology okay next one is so this is easy this was clear next one is uh, okay what is pathology you must have heard this term see logy is study patho comes from the term pathogens pathogens means disease causing there are certain agents which causes diseases bacteria you know viruses fungi which cause you infections so pathology means study of pathogens pathogens means disease causing agents okay you are studying disease for example there is a ringworm infection to someone so basically to you know first of all you are identifying the disease okay this is a ringworm infection then you don't you see an infection you identify it then you study it then you know the causative agent like what is actually causing so you understand okay this is caused by ringworm then you study about this ringworm then you understand how this disease or infection is actually infected or actually transmitted from one person to other person okay so you study the causative agents you study the pattern of transmission so this study about the entire disease disease causing agent its transmission is pathology okay a pathology and the doctor who study okay the person who studies about this thing is called as the pathologist okay so i hope this is clear now the next uh, that we are going to take is uh, physiology have you heard about physiology what is physiology to study body functions body functions like respiration digestion excretion study the body functions this is physiology this is physiology okay so i hope this is clear this is again very important so what do you think what is the study of bacteria all those microorganisms like you know bacteria virus fungi you know protozoans you know what are protozoans like amoeba so what are the study of those microorganisms which are smaller than 1 mm literally they are very small so what are the study of these microorganisms called as very easy study of microorganisms so microbiology microbiology because you are studying small organisms which are less than 1 mm so these are few important branches other important branches you can use that lucent book and you can cover uh, i don't think so any other branches come other than that like only if you use that book now for branches i think that is sufficient also um, things like that is very important like cytology was discovered by dash okay so what is the answer robert hook what is cytology cytology is study of cells okay study of cells i told you all living organisms including bee plants birds everything these are made up of cells so study of cells logy is study and cyto is cells so this study of cells or cytology was discovered by robert hook by robert hook okay this is again a common question then they also ask questions like genetics was discovered by dash so we had already discussed uh, at, at, not in this session i had discussed in 10th standard session so study of uh, 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 genetics basically genes okay study of variations or transmission of character see in last previous session we had discussed what is genetics so this genetics was discovered by grigor johann mendel say grigor johann mendel you have to you have to know the names 
Similarly, this is genetics. Genetics was discovered by Gregor Johann Mendel. Dash discovered modern genetics, something which is much more advanced. Okay. So, modern genetics was discovered by Dash. Come on, tell me. Batesan. Repeat. Batesan. So, modern genetics was discovered by Batesan. Genetics was discovered by Gregor Johann Mendel. One more common question which is very, very, very common. Blood groups are discovered by Dash. You will find them. Very common question. This uh, blood groups was discovered by Landsteiner or also you can say Carl, Land, Carl Landsteiner. Carl Landsteiner. So, Land cheese to yaad rahega na? So, Landsteiner. Okay? Very easy to remember. Landsteiner. Okay? Land mein rehte rehte unhone blood group discovered. Okay? No offense. This was just to remember. Okay? So, this is also very important. Who discovered what? So, these were some important ones. So, there are more to be remembered. So, make sure you remember that also. So, due to time restrictions, since we want to cover the important topics, I'm only covering the important topics. If you have any kind of suggestion, then I would really uh, welcome, uh, you know, I would really be happy to know your suggestions. So, if you have any suggestions regarding, you know, what points could be uh, added or how this course could be improved, then please comment and let me know. Okay. So, now... Today, we are like after these branches, uh, after speaking to you, uh, let's begin with classification or biological classification. So, what do you think guys? How much is it important to classify things? Let me just give you on one example. Do you go to supermarket? Obviously, we do go, right? So, so, for example, I want to buy nice shoes for myself, okay? And I go to a shop. Okay, so I'm searching for shoes, okay? Let me go to a clothing section. Will I find shoes? Do you think if in a supermarket I go to a clothing section, I'll find shoes? No. I'll find clothes. So where am I supposed to go if I want to buy shoes? Definitely I'll go to footwear section. Okay. What about if I want to buy vegetables? Will I go to a footwear section to see vegetables? Obviously no, it's of no use. I have to go to a grocery to find vegetables. So, do you understand how much it is important to classify things? When you go to supermarkets, things are made very easy. They have mentioned, okay, this particular section is clothing section. This particular section is footwear section. Here is grocery. So, it's very much when I enter a big room, things are kept in an easy way so that it would be easy for me to identify, go there and take my thing. Right? So, classification is very important. In the cupboard, for example, imagine you have, let's say most of the time, I keep my clothes like that only in the cupboard. But, so your mom shouts. What mom says, come on, quickly fold the clothes and keep. So what do you do? You fold the clothes and keep in the cupboard, right? Jeans in a different section, shirt in a different section, the dresses you wear at home in a different section, the one you wear outside in a different section. So that becomes very, makes you very much easy. For example, if you have to go to college or anywhere, you just open the cupboard and now you know, okay, which dress am I supposed to choose? isn't it but at the same time if all the clothes are kept in a pile you know and you have to search something you know from where will you climb and where will you search so much wastage of time and energy right same thing scientists also thought okay they wanted to make learning of living organisms in this big you know environment with this big nature where you find so many varieties of living organisms be it a uh, animal or a bacteria Okay, there are so many diversity, biodiversity, my God, that is diversity in living organisms. How will you study each and every organism? So, in order to make learning easy, scientists introduce this term called as classification and hence we call as biological classification. Am I clear with this? Why biological classification is important to make the study easy to know how organisms have been actually evolved? How do we know that we belong to apes? How do we know there were homo sapiens, homo erectus? How do we know the stages of evolution, right? So all these, how did we know the similarities? How do we know the similarities and differences? How can we say that this Christmas tree belongs to plants? Okay, this is only because of classification. So in my next session, we would be know all these things started and uh, we will know about something about Linnaeus, that is Carl Linnaeus. We will understand Carl Linnaeus is also called as father of taxonomy. Okay, you know Linnaeus is known as dash father of taxonomy. Or father of taxonomy is called 
हु इज नोन टू बी फादर ऑफ टैक्सोनॉमी कार लिनेस ओके सो इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल नो एवरीथिंग अबाउट यू नो फाइव किंगडम क्लासिफिकेशन बाय आर एच वाइट पेपर If everything is going bounds right now, just don't worry. In my next lecture, I will complete. So, if this was really helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thank you.